We're going on a sweet trip with Milk by Sweet Trip. My name's Stuart. Welcome to the channel. We're in Music Center. Capo on two, but uh, it's standard tuning. Capo on two. This one's going to be one of those pieces of pie that is not a difficult piece of pie to eat. It's an easy piece of pie to eat. We're going to call it chocolate mousse pie, pumpkin pie. I'm oh, I'm ready for pumpkin pie. Where it's that season. It's that time of year for that sweet, sweet trip of pumpkin pie with milk on top. Guys, First thing I need you to do is play a G major seven chord. Please put your ring finger on the third fret of the top string. Please put your middle finger on the second fret of the second string from the top. Please put your pointer finger on the second fret of the very bottom string, guys. This is G major seven chord. It's a beautiful, ethereal, mystical, magical chord of sweet trip. The song Milk. What you're gonna do on this chord, we're gonna play the one and only strumming pattern for the entire song. You're gonna strum down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. One, two, three, play with me. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. One, two, three, one more time. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Do you think the strumming is easy or hard? Look, look, if you're having any trouble with it, do this, do this with me. We're gonna go back to kindergarten for a second. I would like you to just tap this rhythm on your guitar. Just go boom. One, two, three, do it. Guys, boom, 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 boom. Not too bad. Now play the rhythm. Bow, chicky, chicky, bow, chicky, chicky. One, two, three, twice in a row. Bow, chicky, chicky, bow, chicky, chicky, bow, chicky, chicky, bow, chicky, chicky. That's what I say to my um squad of duck worshipers. No, you call chickens chickies, not ducks. Chickens and ducks, but I call them all chickies to be concise, to save time. Um, and then I, when I tell them to bow, I say, bow, chicky, chicky. This, golly, that's the worst thing I've ever said in a tutorial. It was acting like chickens should bow to me, and I decided to take 45 seconds to say that. I'll be here all night. Tough crowd. I don't... I don't know. Should we stop? Let's just stop now. For the verse to the song, you're going to play that strumming pattern on the G major 7 chord dos times in a row. That's Spanish for two. I'm surprised you didn't know that. After that, we're going to switch to an A minor 7 chord. Here's how you do such a thing. You completely leave that chord behind. Put your pointer finger on the first fret of the second string from the bottom. Put your middle finger on the second fret of the third string from the top. Just those two fingers do the exact same strumming pattern. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, two times in a row. Then we're gonna go to a D7 chord. Guys, D7 is as follows. You keep your pointer finger in the same spot, but you move your middle finger one string down. So now it's on the third string from the bottom on the second fret. And your ring finger is gonna be on the second fret of the bottom string. Guys, for this D7 chord, it is vital that your thumb come up here and mute the top string. It doesn't have to wrap all the way around. It just needs to come up over the top and just, it just needs to squish down and just touch that top string to mute it. It's not gonna be silent. It's just not gonna ring out with a note. And then we can play the whole chord and it doesn't sound terrible. Um, after the D7, we're gonna go to a G6 chord. A G6 chord is exactly the same as a G major seven chord, just without the pointer finger. So it's just ring finger, third fret on top, middle finger, second fret, second string from the top. Guys, we have just played the first four chords of the song. Let's play all of those in a row, twice through the strumming pattern for each chord. G major seven, a one, two, three, kind of slow. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. One more time. Here we go. A minor seven. Then go to D seven. And then go to the G six chord. Good job, guys. Let's stop here. 
One little tip, as you're switching chords, you're gonna notice if we go down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, and then you have to be on the next chord, you don't have a lot of time to switch chords. So what you're gonna do is on the last strum up of each chord, you're gonna lift your fingers up to get ready for the next one. So that's like down, down, up, down, lift, A minor seven. See how that works? It takes some practice. It's not like a quick tip to just immediately be able to switch chords, but that's, that's what you're gonna have to do when you switch from one chord to the other. Down, down, up, down, lift, next chord. Okay, great. I've said that in like every video I've ever made. I'm getting really sick of it. I actually, if we're being honest, guys, can I be honest with you for a second? Those like little tips that I say all the time, I actually really like saying them. I'm not getting sick of it at all. I think that you guys get sick of it, but I do have a very important question for you. This is, I need, I need someone to answer this for me. Why are there so many shadows? Like I have a couple lights and a window. Like I feel like there's, I don't, how do I get rid of these shadows? I've looked online and like, I can't find a good answer. And see, there's some over there too. So if you could go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel and tell me how to get rid of those shadows. I would appreciate it. I'm willing to buy another light. Like I'm not afraid to do that. I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. So we just learned the first half of the verse. Second half of the verse is almost exactly the same. The only difference is we switch the G6 and the G major seven. The first time we did G major seven at the beginning and G6 at the end. Second half of the verse, we do G6 at the beginning, G major seven at the end. Does that make sense? So then the whole verse is G major seven, A minor seven, D7, G6. Second half is G6, A minor seven, D7, G major seven. Let's play through the whole verse once. One, two, three, good luck, guys. G major seven. And then switch to the A minor seven. Yes. Then to the D seven. And then Then you stay on the G6. Quick little nap. Then A minor seven. Then to the D7. And then you go to G major seven. Oh, great job guys, bing bang. Then there's a quick little interlude. Now, I I think that what the guitar is doing for the interlude is this. I think it's going. But I don't, but it sounds at the very beginning, it sounds like it's going. It sounds like it has this one extra little accented chord at the beginning. It might just be like the bass and stuff doing it, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with that little accented thing, because I like how it sounds. So here's what you're gonna do. Right at the beginning of the interlude, you're gonna get a D chord all ready to go. Do you guys know the D? It's middle finger, second fret, bottom string, ring finger, third fret, second string from the bottom, pointer finger, second fret, third string from the bottom, but then get your thumb to play the second fret of the top string. Do a strum of that. Then we're gonna switch to a C major seven chord. C major seven is ring finger, third fret, second string from the top, middle finger, second fret, third string from the top, and that's it. We're gonna do the regular strumming, the same strumming as the verse for this interlude, except at the very beginning, when we go from our D over F sharp to the C major seven, it's gonna go down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. It's a little bit weird there. It's down, up, down, up, down. Let's do that a couple times. It's, this is hard. And the truth is, you don't even have to do it. You can leave this chord off and just go to C major seven if you want. It's gonna be fine either way, but let's practice it my way. Uh, there's always my way, Haunted Mansion, Disneyland. One, two, three, here we go. Down, down, down. One, two, three, one more time. Down, up, oh. Okay, great. 
So we do the C major seven twice through the strumming pattern. Then we go to D, plain old regular D. That's just from the bottom, two, three, two, mute the top string. You do the strumming pattern on this two times. Then you go back to the C major seven, do that twice, back to the D, do that twice. That's the interlude. Let's do the interlude all the way through. How is that joke still in Haunted Mansion at Disneyland? Like, I like it, but like they've literally, the guy like kills himself right in front of you on the Haunted Mansion ride. It's brutal. Well, he did it a long time ago, but then I guess, I don't know. It's confusing. I don't understand. Haunted Mansion is way too confusing for me. Interlude, here we go. Bow, bow, uh. down, down, up, down, up, down, then to the D. Back to the C major seven. Oh, yes. Then you go to D. the second verse second verse exactly the same as the first verse guys but then we get to the chorus of the song chorus to the song is such a joy here's what's going to happen you get your c major seven chord ready to go we're not doing that nonsense we we're doing before just straight to the c major seven you do the strumming pattern twice on the c major seven then we do the strumming pattern twice on the d great that's just like the interlude right but then we go to the a minor seven remember that one we do it twice there then we're gonna go to a b minor seven chord guys B minor seven is like this. Your middle finger plays second fret, second string from the top. Ring finger plays second fret, third string from the bottom. And your pinky plays second fret on the very bottom string. It would be great if you could mute the top string. The truth is with this chord, if you don't mute the top string, it kind of sounds okay. But try to mute the top string with your thumb. B minor seven, the first four chords of the chorus were C major seven, D, a minor seven, B minor seven. Let's go ahead and play that through. One, two, three, not too fast. C major seven, yes. Oh, so much fun, D. Great job, we're doing it. Can you believe that we're doing it? A minor seven, oh. This is so much fun, D minor seven. Oh, great job. And then we go back to C major seven. You do the strumming pattern twice on C major seven, back to D again. You do the strumming pattern on D twice again. Then the chords start moving a little bit faster. We're gonna do A minor seven, but just one time through the strumming. Then we go to E7. The way you play E7 is you take your A minor seven and each finger just hops up to one of those strings on top. So what you do is your middle finger goes to second fret, second string from the top, pointer finger goes to first fret, third string from the bottom. That's an E7 chord, guys, from the top. It's zero, two, zero, one, zero, zero. One time through the strumming pattern on this E7. Then hop right on back to the A minor seven, do the strumming pattern once there. Then go to D7. Remember D7 from the verse? You do the strumming pattern one time on that chord. Then the next chord, I think, I think they I I think they might just be playing a G chord, but what I think sounds I don't know, it's a little hard to tell. I'm gonna play the B minor seven again here. So that's what I'm doing. So once we started moving fast through the chords, we go A minor seven, E seven, A minor seven, D seven, then B minor seven, back to E seven, then we go A minor seven. D7, regular G. Guys, regular G is middle finger, third fret, top string, pointer finger, second fret, second string from the top, ring finger, third fret, second string from the bottom, pinky, third fret on the bottom string. That was a lot of chords. Here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna play through the whole chorus and I'm just gonna yell out the names of the chords as we go and it's gonna be perfectly fine. Memor memorizing is good for you. It's good for your brain. Eat blueberries too. Those are also good for your brain. One two, three, here we go. C major seven, oh. And then you go to D. What's next, do you remember? Then you go to A minor seven. I should say it before it's too late. Next is B minor seven. Get ready and B minor seven. Then we're gonna go to C major seven in just a second. There it is. 
Next is D, get ready. And here's the D. Then A minor seven, and we're gonna start switching faster, okay? So the A minor seven, get ready for E seven right here. Then back to A minor seven. And then to D seven. Then B seven, B minor seven, good luck. Oh, I kind of messed that one up. I set you up for failure there. Then E seven, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Then A minor seven, okay. Yes, then D seven. And then regular G, oh. And for this regular G, we do it twice in a row. Great job, guys. Guys, you nailed it, you nailed it. Even with me doing everything I could to mess you up, you still got it. Then we go to the little like solo. I'm not gonna teach you the solo. There's so many effects and stuff on the guitar. I don't know, I'm just do, just play the chords. So the chords for the solo, for the guitar solo, it's just the same as the chords for the interlude. We go C major seven, D, C major seven, D. Like, just mess or just, okay, look. If you wanna, what you can do, let me show you some notes that they use. If you just play top string open, third fret on the top string, then play second string open, and then on the second string play two, three, five, and seven. Those notes all sound really good on this song, and you can just make up your own little solo. You go. They do. That's basically basically what I'm getting at. Is I don't remember. I don't, the solo is just an ethereal, magical, mystical thing. Just I don't want to do it. All right, moving on to the to the ending to the song is you just play the chorus, the whole chorus, all the way through again, exactly the same. When you get to the final chord, the G major seven, you just strum that G major seven, and the song is done. And that's how you play Milk by Sweet Trip. 